before, after. During this video, we're gonna show you how to make the colors pop in your photos. Hello, and welcome to PhotographyTV.com. During this episode, we're gonna show you how to make the colors pop in your photos. In fact, I received this comment on one of the videos from our Yosemite backpacking trip. It's from a viewer named Steve. Steve says, how do you get those colors to pop so much? The red on the REI backpack is just about punching you in the face. I've never seen something so red. So I thought, well, I'll make a video showing Steve and others how I got this particular photo to make the colors pop. And then we'll also give you another tip beyond this photo of just ways to really adjust the colors and get the effect that you want. So the first tip that I'm gonna give you to edit your photos and to get the colors to really pop is you wanna shoot in RAW. And then you obviously wanna have an editing software that you can edit those RAW files. And so I use Adobe Lightroom. I'll put a link in the description in case you're not currently using Adobe Lightroom. It'll be an affiliate link where you can try it out. I recommend using the Adobe Photography Creative Cloud. I think it's about $10 a month. It's absolutely incredible. It gives you Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and a lot of additional benefits as well. So check that out if you're not currently using Adobe Lightroom. But now let's talk about this particular photo. Again, here's the before, relatively dull. Colors aren't popping. It looks kind of flat because it's a raw image. And here's the after, as Steve mentioned, that red really pops out jumps out at you. So let's show you exactly how it was done. So I'm actually gonna scroll up here on the right hand side, I'm in the develop module and really all of the edits for this photo were done using the basic tab. White balance was not adjusted at all. Um, exposure was good, it didn't have to adjust that much at all. And the first thing that I think really started to make the colors pop was by boosting the contrast. And you can see I'll take it off and then bring it back in. I think I had it around 25 or so. And that really does increase the colors. So again, back to zero here and bring it back up. You can see it starts to add that, that pop to the color. So now every photo is different. So don't come in, take a photo and just match these exact numbers. Work with it, understand what the different tools do and get the effect that you're looking for. But in this case, boosting the contrast really did make that difference. It really darkened, deepened the red, so to speak. Uh, let's say that was one of the key things for this particular photo was boosting the contrast. I brought the highlights down a little bit, but that was more to uh, adjust the background and some of the, the brightness off the rock. So there wasn't anything major that did the colors there. But I think the second thing beyond the contrast, the second thing that really made the colors pop in this photo and can do it in some of your others is I brought the shadows way up, up to 85. And I don't normally push them that far, but in this particular photo, it worked well. And you can see again, without that, look how dark those shadows were. They got even worse when I boosted the contrast than the original image. But because it was so dark in the shadows, but the background light was about where I wanted it, by bringing these shadows up, it really made those colors pop. So you can adjust the shadows, pull the shadows up. I think that really can help some of the, the colors pop. Again, every photo is different, depends on the histogram, how things are set up. But in this case, pulling the shadows up really made the colors pop. And then, you know, the whites and the blacks, small adjustments there, but that didn't have anything to do with the colors. And then lastly, I boosted the vibrance just a little bit as well. But I'd say more than anything on this photo is the contrast and the shadows that made it pop. When you boost the shadows this much, one thing I like to do to help at least offset the look of that is I do a small S curve on the tone curve. Let me turn that off and show you what it looks like without it. Without it, look at how much brighter the image is. It almost is, it's not that it's overexposed or too bright, it more just, it has that glossy look to it. I think it's just almost a little too, too bright on the eyes. So by adding the S curve, it just softens it a little bit. And I like that. And I do that anytime I pull the shadows up that much, it is going to really give that super bright glossy look, but by adding a small S curve and to do that, you just click the dot here and you pull this end up and then you can add a dot here and pull this end down. Just creates that small S curve. I think it softens the image, almost adds a little bit of a matte look, which I like. So that was really all of the edits on this particular photo. So Steve was asking about this photo, how to get the reds to pop so much. It was really a combination of number one, shooting raw, 
but boosting the contrast, boosting the shadows, and then I kind of softened it up with the, the small S curve on this particular photo. Now, one other tip I'm gonna give you beyond what I did on this particular photo, because I didn't do it on this photo, which is if you wanna adjust the colors of just one color, maybe you don't wanna do it overall with shadows or contrast, but you just really wanna focus on the red or a blue, one thing you can do in Lightroom is come down to this section here, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. And you can toggle between the three if you're on HSL, and you can adjust the luminance or the saturation. These are the two that I use the most, and you can zone in on one particular color. Now I'm gonna show you, and I wouldn't recommend it for this photo, but watch what happens when I adjust it. You can see I'm just adjusting the red. No other colors are moving around. Now in this case, I didn't need that, so I'll put it back to zero. But let me show you another photo totally separate that I did use this type of tool and it really made a big difference. So I'm gonna go back to my library. I'm gonna come over here. This is October of last year. My son and I took a trip to Moab, Utah. We got to go to uh, Arches National Park, which is absolutely incredible. I'll have some videos coming out on that. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, I'll get around to making that video. But let's show you this photo. I think this is a photo that I think is a really good example of using the luminance slider. So this is a photo, let me show you the before. Again, relatively flat, colors aren't popping, nothing like that, it's kind of a flat photo. But after, the colors started to pop a little bit more. And I started again with very similar edits to what I mentioned before with boosting the contrast, the shadows, the S-curve, almost an identical edit structure here, but watch this one. So now let me turn the luminance off. I came down to luminance and I just pulled down the blue. And the reason I do that is by adjusting the luminance of the blue, you can darken the definition of the sky, especially on those days where the sky is just a little blown out or a little, you know, less color showing in the sky, you can see I, I didn't blow it out in the image. It's not that I overexposed it too much or anything like that, but it was just kind of a, a bright day in the sky. By taking the luminance, the blue slider, and pulling it down, you can add the color back into the sky. Now, again, don't go too far because it'll look fake. That's always a risk in editing photos. Sometimes I'm guilty of going too far myself. But by bringing the blue down, now I've added more definition to the sky. It makes those clouds pop a little bit more. Here it is without it, and here it is adding it back in. You can see the, the definition that comes back into the sky by doing that. So those are a few tips to help you make the colors pop in your photos. And then lastly, if you wanna sign up for Adobe Lightroom, check out the affiliate link below, and please subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks for watching.